China's once hot housing market has taken an unusual turn this summer, as evidenced by the changes in the land market. Recently, China has seen frequent aborted land auctions in several places and many parcels sold at reserved prices. Some have referred to this phenomenon in the industry as a collective lying flat of the Chinese real estate companies. Lying flat is a term coined in China describing a non-violent movement of non-cooperation. Let's first look at China's first-tier city, Hangzhou. An old and famous Chinese saying goes like this, There are paradises above, and Suzhou and Hangzhou below. It describes how beautiful the city of Hangzhou has been since ancient times. September 15th was the deadline to apply for the land auction offered by the Hangzhou municipal government. However, among the 10 parcels, only one went ahead with the auction, while the other nine could not enter the bidding session because the applicants did not meet the bidding requirements. The Chinese media reported such a situation as the first of its kind in Hangzhou's many years of selling land. How could this happen? Recently, the municipal government of Hangzhou announced new rules on the centralized sale of residential land. Several of them have been adopted by some other cities. They are rules adjusted following the recent instructions from the central government. One rule that makes the most significant impact is that the amount of land acquired by real estate companies must not exceed 40% of the sales from the previous year. It means that the government requires real estate companies to have sufficient sales and working capital to be eligible to bid for land. This rule corresponds to the three red lines set out by the Chinese government for real estate companies in August 2020. That is, the asset liability ratio after excluding prepayments should not exceed 70%, the net debt ratio should not be greater than 100%, and the ratio of cash to short-term debt should not be less than 1. Real estate companies that violate these three red lines will immediately fall into financing difficulties. Evergrande Group, China's second largest property developer by sales and the 122nd largest group in the world by revenue, now facing a debt crisis of 300 billion US dollars, is a typical example of a company that has violated all three red lines. A Chinese real estate research firm, Beiku Research Institute, issued its 2021 mid-year report saying that only 37% of the Chinese real estate companies and monitors are considered to be basically qualified for financing in China. If the first rule has already flushed out many real estate companies with poor financing capabilities, the following rules will make even the few remaining real estate companies lose their nerve. The second rule from the Hangzhou government requires that bidding real estate companies must have finished homes ready and passed the inspection before selling them. It is also the Chinese government's latest experiment, requiring that homes built on the land be sold as finished homes rather than pre-sales that have been common in China for a long time. The sale of finished homes means that real estate companies cannot rely on pre-sales for a quick return of capital, and the capital occupation cycle would become 5 to 10 times longer than in the past. A Shanghai real estate market analyst said, Given such requirements, getting the land is like getting mosquito meat. There is no profit to be made, so simply don't take it. There is also the pressure of the red lines, so forget it. The companies might as well lie flat. Moreover, new rules also require that land purchase funds shall not use various types of funds raised through financial institutions and companies shall not use loans or prepayments from related companies upstream and downstream of the real estate industry chain. These rules highlight the Chinese government's intent to gradually drive real estate companies with low financing capacity and fragile capital chains out of the market. As a result, aborted land auctions are becoming a trend. Chengdu, a city in southwest China, sold 19 pieces of land, 15 of which were sold directly at zero premium without any bidding process. Local Chinese governments may not have anticipated this. 
They have long relied on land sales for their finances. In 2020, land sales in all Chinese cities accounted for 44% of national and 84% of local revenues. Land sales drive real estate, which in turn drives other industries such as steel, cement, manufacturing, energy, transportation, etc. The critical element is land. Land sale is a common expression in China. In reality, Chinese property owners only have the right to use the land for 70 years. Upon the expiration of the 70-year period, the buildings on the land belong to the owner, and the land is taken back by the government. To apply for the right to use the land again, one has to pay a premium according to the land price at the time. However, the first batch of property owners in China has owned their property certificates for only 30 plus years. How will the Chinese government handle property rights when they expire? There is no real case yet in China. With the three red lines set by Xi Jinping's administration and the increasing tightening of financial policies such as bank loans, not only small and medium-sized real estate companies, but also many leading companies in the industry are struggling. Survival has become the number one priority. Most of them have chosen to lie flat by either not obtaining land or taking the initiative to reduce land procurement. This shows the CCP's powerlessness and dilemma in the face of the severe real estate bubble. In previous videos, we have explained how the real estate bubble in China came to be. After the 1989 Tiananmen massacre, China started and developed a deformed economy based on land sales during the 20 plus years when Jiang Zemin, the former CCP leader, was in power. According to industry analysis, the cost of land accounts for about 30% to 40% of the price of a home. Developers' profits generally account for 8% to 15%. According to Shanghai-based real estate consulting firm EH Consulting, from 2018 to 2020, for the 50 classic real estate companies under its track, these companies' average net profit margin has dropped from 14.55% to 11.6%, with a downward trend year by year and at an accelerated pace. During Jiang Zemin's 20-plus years in power, the real estate economy developed following a time-for-space philosophy. In order to reap more profits, the various governments which hold the land keep raising the price of land to a level that the masses can't afford, even if they had a lifetime salary. The rapid development of the real estate industry and its impact on crushing consumer spending has become increasingly evident. On June 10, 2021, a China private economic research society published an article titled, Comparison of Housing Prices in Major Cities Worldwide. Is there a bubble in Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, or not? The report uses June data from Numbio, the world's largest online collaborative database, and selects a sample of 20 of the world's most representative major cities to analyze their absolute and relative home price levels. The results show that Shenzhen, Beijing, and Shanghai have the highest burden of home ownership in the world. China's real estate businessmen, for their part, have worked out a unique home sales system. Especially after 2012, the real estate moguls have collectively promoted high turnover, meaning the average cycle from land acquisition to pre-sales was only about 8 months. In 2020, the world's top real estate enterprise, China's Country Garden, created a 456 model. That is, the pre-sale starts 4 months after land acquisition, the capital is recovered in 5 months, and the capital is further leveraged in 6 months. Large conglomerates with exceptional financial strength and cash flow are well aware that the CCP believes that land prices can appreciate feverishly. So, they have chosen a different path to riches. They circumvent land idling regulations and hoard large amounts of land waiting for their appreciation. For example, Li Kaxing, the richest man in Hong Kong, back in 1993, his company acquired a Beijing real estate project it took 15 years to develop its first phase, and the rest was further divided into three phases. It was not until 2018 that the project was completed. By then, it had appreciated 20 times in value after 25 years of holding. Some research shows that Li Kaxing's real estate development cycle is a minimum of seven years. Some local governments had hoped to draw in his capital to drive development in its surroundings. However, the richest man in Hong Kong, who has close ties with former party leader Jiang Zemin, waited until the surrounding facilities were developed and the property had appreciated before starting construction. 
In March 2013, when Xi became China's president and began to seize power from Jiang and his faction, the Li Keqing family sold many of its core assets in China, pulling large sums of money out of China and moving most of it to the UK. On September 17, 2021, the Li family sold another property project in Shanghai, which is largely completed but vacant for 16 years since the land was first acquired. We will stick to the principle that houses are for living in, not for speculation, and accelerate the establishment of a housing system that features supply by multiple players, guarantee through multiple channels, and encouragement of both renting and purchasing. We will steadily implement a long-term mechanism for the real estate sector by stabilizing land prices, house prices, and expectations so as to promote the steady and healthy development of the real estate market. The Xi government is clearly aware of the terrible financial risks associated with the massive bubble in China's real estate economy. In December 2020, the CCP published a guidebook on the 14th Five-Year Plan and proposals for the 2035 vision, in which the chairman of the China Bank and Regulatory Commission published an op-ed. In the article, the chairman wrote, since the last century, there have been more than 130 financial crises globally, more than 100 of which was related to real estate. At present, China's real estate-related loans accounts for 39% of loans in the banking sector, and there are also a large number of bonds, equity, trusts, and other funds entering the real estate industry. It can be said that real estate is the biggest gray rhino in terms of financial risk in China at this stage. Beijing is now very anxious about the flow of hot money into the real estate and commodity sectors, trying to curb the momentum of capital-driven growth of mainland real estate companies. The hope is to redirect capital from the real estate sector to the stock and bond markets to benefit the real economy while reducing financial risks and inflationary pressures in the real estate sector. However, this is like walking on a tightrope in the air full of risks. Without the injection of more capital into the real estate industry, real estate companies are increasingly choosing to lie flat in the face of the deteriorating environment. It will inevitably impact the confidence of investors and home buyers to a great degree. Will it lead to the collapse of the chain of debt? The financial crisis of numerous Chinese real estate companies, led by Evergrande Group, continues to ripple. Will it lead to a financial meltdown in China and trigger the gray rhino button in Chinese real estate? The situation is yet to be seen. Would 我们自己的钱砸进去了，我们入不了恒大，钱不赚钱。我一辈子都砸进去了，我现在已经没有名声，也没有。贵以如之恒大为耻，我这辈子最后悔的事情都是入不了恒大。现在这个。现在这么财，